JSON is a data format used in programming languages and web development throughout the world. JSON is an acronym that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Used far more than just in JavaScript, it's a universal data format. This is what JavaScript data looks like. You can see that in this example, we have a list of students. Each name and property is listed by commas and colons separating them. If two different servers are trying to communicate on the internet, you will have a request and a response type of action. And it is highly likely that both the request and the response are going to be sent in this JSON format. So that way operating systems have a common language that they can communicate with. Now let's look at how this is formatted. In this example, you can see that the first character is a square bracket, which means that we have a list or an array. A curly bracket means that we are beginning the definition of an object. And in this case, the object is a student. Inside this student is another property that is an array itself. Each item in the object or in the array can be a string, as you can see the name, or it could be a Boolean value, which in this case is a true or false value. Notice there are no quotation marks around the word false here. The next item here is an integer of age of 25, and notice there are no quotation marks around the number. And then the next item is a float, which is a decimal number. So this is the basics of how you would construct an object or a list in JSON. Prior to JSON, a popular data format was XML, which accomplishes the same thing. You can see the list here showing that the same list of students has a bunch of brackets that looks like HTML code from a web page. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it has fallen out of favor in some places because it is a little bit more clumsy to work with. JSON is so important that it's a prerequisite that you need to know for pretty much every type of programming language. For example, here in C Sharp, you can see that there is a convert statement here to serialize an object. So we take a product, which is going to be turned into this, which is a JSON statement showing that we can now transfer this to any language, whether C Sharp, JavaScript, or anything else. Now let's take a look at a programming example. So I have a simple JavaScript and HTML web page. First of all, this students.json file contains two students in a list, Nathan and Hannah. This web page index has a link to a JavaScript program, so main.js is the script. Importantly, that we're going to put in a section where we're going to make a list of names that will appear on the web page. I added some styles so that the page looks good. And then finally, the main part is this program here, main.js. You can see right now, it doesn't do anything except for respond with a button clicked message. And then we're gonna add the code here in just a second to process the file. I'm going to run the server so that way we can get the JavaScript running. Next, I open up the web browser to see what the program looks like. And I click the fetch people button. And now I get the alert that says button clicked. Now I'm going to add some code here. So let's go after the alert and paste in something new. So you can see that this command is fetch, which is supposed to go get the student's JSON file. Next, I want to save it to the people variable. And then I'm going to put a console log message that says, tell me how many people I fetched. Now with this JavaScript programming, I need to put in another command called async because await and async work together, but that's another subject. I'm going to save this and refresh the page. Okay, the page is up and running, so this time I'm going to inspect the page and show the console log. And now when I click the fetch people button, I'm going to get a message that says you fetched two people. So it looks like the fetching is working. Now let's add some more data so we can understand what's going on. So I'm going to paste in another line that says, display the entire list. And so I'm going to console log the people. Let's see what that looks like. Let's refresh the page. I'm going to choose fetch people. And this time you're going to see that in the console log, there is a list of two items. And each item has all of the properties, including the name, the age, and their class list. Finally, let's add some more code. So I'm going to paste in a line that says, for each item, we're going to create an element, a list item element, and then we're going to add it to the page as appending it. So this is all JavaScript code that should be able to add people to my website. Let's refresh the page again. I'm going to choose fetch people. And this time you can see that the items on the screen now include the Nathan and Hannah two data types that I asked for, as well as showing them in the console. 
I invite you to come on over to studycoding.org, which is where I put most of my tutorials. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. You can become a software developer with all of the material that I have available here. So check out studycoding.org, and I'll see you soon.